<laughs> Go. Welcome to APEC. <laughs> Whoa, I've got to get my Word document up. Oh. So I can read my research. Go. We're talking about Shane's experience. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so we're going to talk today about um, different methods for fat loss and then specific, we've got Shane O'Rourke who's a bodybuilder and he's going to talk about some of his experience and some of the stuff he's done through. Lucky enough for us, he's also a nutritionist here, so he's got all the information and lots of experience about um, tips for fat loss and then he's got quite a bit of experience in cutting weight specific for a competition and then he'd know about it in general as well. So we'll start Shane, do you want to just give us say some of principles around losing fat yeah of course so first off i suppose for the basics from the most basic principle i suppose when it comes to weight loss you're going to be looking at your energy balance equations so you're going to be looking at calories in versus calories out so the simplest simplest point of view you have to be you have to be eating less calories than you're expending it's a very simple level so obviously there's a huge different array of ways to get to that so usually for fat loss the best principle the best advice i can give to people assuming it's not going to be what they want to hear the most, but is you have to give yourself enough time to do it at a steady, healthy level. So again, if you're trying to focus primarily on losing fat and not just losing weight, obviously you're going to have to have a healthy diet attached to that, but you want to be slowly reducing your calories as you go through and upping your your expenditure to make sure that you're targeting just because if you lose too much weight too fast, it's impossible to just drop that body fat so you're going to be you're going to be losing muscle mass at the same time sorry can i just i don't mean to cut across your principles here one thing that i find, I find happens all the time with myself is that i spend all winter long trying to get as big as i can it comes to the summer i leave it too late to diet or reduce my calories and then i go on this really restrictive diet and i find that i lose loads of muscle tissue as well like all that size just dissipates and when i've done that before exactly like you said there taking a proper runway into it you almost like you, you it feels like you have more shape or more size to you than than it is when you go on those hard restrictive um cuts yeah 100 percent. and like say for example like you're a big enough guy so when you were trying to put on muscle mass your diet could have been up say three and a half four thousand calories and then if you're talking to do a super restrictive diet, it could have come down to close to 2000. So you're mm. almost halving the calorie amount you're taking in in half, which is like a ridiculous drop. Like that's in some cases, a person's entire like food load in a day that yeah. you're cutting just out of your diet. So it's yeah. very hard to live by that then with such a big change. Mm. So ideally you'd be coming into that, say at the end of your, your bulking phase when you kind of stop it, you should have a maintenance phase, even if it's only a couple of weeks or like a reverse dieting back down towards that so that you're not hardlining jumping from four thousand to two and a half thousand mm. Does that makes sense yep yep and it's the same then if you're coming for a prolonged so even when i'm doing a bodybuilding prep it's rarely it's never shorter than 16 weeks it's between 20 and 16 weeks so that i have first of all it means when i'm close to a show it's not as restrictive or i'm not going to be as impacted on my like general performance in general like because i'm not not like 100 percent professional athlete like i still have to work i still have to do everything like normal people do as well as my bodybuilding training and eating so you have to make sure that you're able to function on that level as well like you can't go into coach people and just sit grumpily in the corner you have to be able to function so that's why i like to do it longer and it means then i don't have to be super restrictive until like the last week or two when so it's, how long it's would you say out. that people need to give them so I mean, again I, I know this is very dependent upon how much body composition you have so on and so forth but like if you were to give a time frame as to a runway people need to give themselves to get into a reasonable level of shape i suppose half a kilo a week is kind of a good a good barometer for people to follow so initially initially it'll probably be much higher than that so even regardless of what level you're starting at if you go on to sort of a restrictive diet you'll see a large jump in kind of weight loss in the first kind of week or two like two three kilos potentially a week just because of the big change and you'll be kind of eradicating a lot of water weight and things like that so it'll go down so it'll drop usually but after that kind of i suppose main or initial phase then it will be kind of a half kilo a week would be mm. half kilo to a week or to a kilo i wouldn't want to be losing any more than that okay this is going to be super restrictive and you know yourself you go on something super restrictive once you try to mediate that back again you put on a lot of that weight just kind of straight away yeah because you've kind of 
you've knocked your own metabolism down because you've gone so drastic in your gut for so long. And then within, say, losing half a kilo a week, I presume the length of time you can lose a half a kilo a week is dependent on your size to start with, is it? So a bigger person can stay at losing half a kilo a week for longer than someone who's smaller, is it? 100%, yeah. And that's why, I suppose, when we're coming, sorry, when me and my coach are working through about like a bodybuilding cook plan, we usually, you want to try and start on the least, how do I phrase this? You're the lowest cut to calories that'll still elicit that half kilo response Does that yeah, make sense? so you want so to you want to be, be yeah, in a position reduce as little calories to get a weight loss as i can so so essentially you want to try and reduce your body fat while while consuming the most amount of calories exactly and adding that so by changing my general diet and activity levels the least that'll still elicit that five kilo difference so that's an interesting way of looking at it so when you're at that point then so if Mm. you want to keep your calories as high as you can once you want to start losing yeah would you go straight to manipulating the diet or would you just try and increase your exercise a bit usually is a combo i increase my exercise a little bit to start with start with so that'll help change the energy balance exactly because it's increasing your workload exactly 100 percent. so that's what i was saying by changing as little as possible that leaves me as many weapons as possible in my arsenal to attack weight as it plateaus along the way. Interesting. So as in when I stop dropping or my weight loss reduces to say 0.2 kilos a week or 0.1 kilos a week, then I can be like, okay, well I need to, this time I can increase my activity. Perfect, I'll add in an extra walk or an extra 40 minutes cardio a day. Next time it happens, I can go, okay, well now I'll reduce calories. Then come back and be like, okay, well maybe I'll add a hit session or two in a week. And then I have more room to play with. So it means that I don't necessarily have to cut over that 16 to 20 weeks I don't usually have to cut my calories too much more than I did initially. So it could be, so I think from my cut started at 3000 calories for my last cut. And I think my lowest was 2400 before like the peak week, which again isn't. So that's 600 calories over the close to 20 weeks. So I'm interested to know then, let's say you get to a stage where you have maximized the restriction of calories so you say you don't want to go below your 2400 so let's say you're at your 24 2500 calories what's the next tool that you would use to try and bring down body composition so we can so i suppose when i'm on that 2400 calories it's not every single day so there'll be an element of carb cycling in that then as well so say for example if i'm if i'm gymming four times a week mm. and then i'll make sure that i'm kind of higher carbohydrate days so my 2400 days will be those days when i know i'm training so i can get meals in before i train and after i train so i'm still having a good session and then the days when i'm not training i could be kind of down maybe towards 2100 or 2200 so i'll kind of reduce my carbohydrates down just because again i don't need that energy and i'll be a lower so i can cut then on those days does that make sense so carb cycling okay so that'll be still pretty less or pretty low or pretty late in the game sorry so that'll be kind of the last six weeks i'd say so essentially what you're saying is you want to be consuming more glycogen or carbohydrates around your training yeah so they're your higher carb days your lower carb days are probably your smaller muscle groups or your off days yeah usually off days so off days will usually still involve some sort of cardio at that stage but like I won't be lifting or they won't be high intensity. And you don't care about your carbohydrate intake around your cardio? Not no. hugely because I'm not I'm not doing it to elicit performance gains or performance benefits. It's more for the general calorie. So it's probably burn. more so about making sure that you consume some protein so you don't get exactly. muscle breakdown. Yeah, so my protein level or um, my protein intake would remain relatively constant for the whole, okay. whole seven days. Okay, so high protein even around your cardio stuff, but then carb cycling is your next tool once you've reduced those carbohydrates. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Then for the 20 weeks, is the protein the same, similar enough the entire way through? Or yeah. does it come down as well? No, it would be it? pretty similar. It's usually so it's, it's I'm, just fats and carbs. Exactly, yeah. Way. So I'm cutting things from the initial plan and I've never really cut any proteins today. So I presume my protein content actually technically was getting higher and higher as a higher percentage. percentage of my macro. Yeah. yeah. And then... So when you were saying you're kind of doing like 16 to 20 weeks and then we start with making as little change as possible. How long in your experience for you say are you expecting before you get your first plateau? 
and you have to change, say, increase the exercise again or reduce the calories to get keep up with this, say, 0.2 or half a kilo a week? It's usually kind of about six weeks before the first one kicks in. For me, anyway, it's going to be, it'll fluctuate from person to person and obviously what you've been doing before you entered into this fat loss phase. But for me, it's kind of always been about six weeks before it it hits a plateau or I feel I need to change it or attack it probably. And then after that, it depends on what you've changed, is it? Or is it usually every six weeks? Usually be every kind of three weeks. So two to three weeks. And you make a change and every you make time a small you hit a plateau? Change. Yeah, usually. Again, unless there was something like exponential that happened, like something weird happened that was out of context. And I was like, well, that's probably what's deviating the weight. So I'll give it a few days to see if it like regulates. Like say if I had, I don't know, like a transatlantic flight or I didn't sleep for whatever reason or something happened. There was a family emergency. So I was out in the emergency room all day or something like that. That was something out of clarity that would like spike cortisol would have really affected my general rhythm. Mm. Then I'll leave it a few days to kind of see if it deviates back to normal or it gets back on the scale. Mm. But other than that, yeah, every kind of two, three days and every time it's plateauing, I'd, I'd attack something. That's good. So commit to what you're doing for a while. Mm. And then even if there's one or two days, say if you measure yourself yeah. every day, there will be daily fluctuations. So exactly. you're nearly better at, say, taking a mm. weekly measurement or the average for the week and yeah. change down from that every time. And even some days that could be not even necessarily always a plateau um, is why we change it. Like, so say, for example, if I'm feel I'm losing weight too quickly or like obviously bodybuilding is very much based on aesthetics so if I'm looking in the mirror I'm like geez I look very like flat or kind of thing then I'll implement something like a very high carb day as like I don't want to say cheat day but like a a reload day where I really try to pump as much carb like double my carbohydrate intake to see because again if my muscles are just completely sapped with glycogen going in I want to see if it fills back up and see how that affects my body so speak to me what that what that looks like and again I understand it's different for every person but Let's talk about that refeed day for you. So if you were going, let's talk about, sorry, let's talk about first of all, what a low carbohydrate day looks like for you. So first thing in the morning, morning break, breakfast is usually eggs. And usually for the start of the program, there's toast or a bagel with it, but that goes, that's pretty much the first thing to go. Okay. Then after that, Sounds so sad about that, didn't he? Unfortunately. <laughs> it's the worst one. Like, <laughs> it's the best By one. Far, the yeah, worst, exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, that starts the morning off well and then it just dies. Because everything else is like, okay, you'll take some of that rice out or you'll take some of that out. So it's like, oh, it's still there, but like, toast just goes entirely, which is mean. But then after that, so I'm just going to go through a regular day first and then I'll show you how I'll manipulate it for lower high carbs. Then I'll have chicken and rice with some veg, depending on. Well, veg is dependent on kind of what's there. I don't worry too Classic. much about every sort of veg that's there. It wow. is pretty, it's pretty like standard bodybuilding y thing. Yeah. You could probably finish it off from here. <laughs> but after that is usually, or at the time was when I trained. So I go in to train and I'd have oats and whey protein afterwards. So the chicken and rice was before? Chicken and rice was at lunch. Right. It wouldn't have been a huge serving. Okay. Then I trained, then I have oats and whey, and then it was usually rice or potatoes and veg and then either chicken or beef depending on the day i'd kind of fluctuate trade them in and out same thing and then it was usually dark chocolate like a couple of squares of dark chocolate then in the evening oh oh living life oh yeah well Hold i don't really have like here. what i didn't have like much of a car of, of a fat source in the rest of the day so it'd be a yogurt or a dark chocolate source just because I didn't have a huge mint and it was an easy way to get in and it's kind of so you pretty much had carbohydrates like so this is a moderate this isn't this is an average day for you this you is would, just yeah you would have carbohydrates with every single meal yeah mate you know that I'd be the size of that table there that where you have your computer on if, <laughs> if I ate like that well, I'm uh, hearing that he's a bodybuilder and he's chocolate every day yeah. yeah okay so what's a low carb day look like for you then so it'll be obviously my toast is gone at my breakfast unfortunately Aww. as we discussed i'm not particularly happy about it then from there it'll just be the amount i'll still have carbs with every meal after that it'll just be restricted on when or restricted on sorry the amount so it might be half the rice as a normal day with the chicken and rice both times and probably much less oats on a non-trading day but other than that everything would be the same 
And do you feel like a horrible person when you go to a low low carb day? Yeah, not great. You've experienced horrible person shame. I have. It's Actually, not even necessarily horrible. I don't come into work on your low carb day. <laughs> start going low carb more often. <laughs> when I burst into the office and I see that you have no rice in your lunchbox, I'm like, fuck this, I'm out of here. We went to the first year I was cutting when we were at APEC. You, you decided we were going to have one of our meetings in Five Guys. <laughs> When Five Guys had just come to Ireland, and I was like, what do you mean we're having it? Five Guys, he goes, we're just going to go try it out as a team. And I was like, why, why are we doing this? No, oh no. Because he's a mean, mean <laughs> person and he did it on purpose. <laughs> oh no, look at this cool place. You coming? No, we went out for our, I don't know what you would call it, your pre-Christmas <laughs> meal or whatever. We didn't have a lot of spare cash at the time. So I'm like, right, we'll do it in Five Guys. <laughs> and everyone ordered Five Guys. And Shane didn't order anything. I was like, what's wrong with you? And he's like, oh, I can't. I have a bodybuilding competition coming up in a couple of weeks. And he sat there through the whole meal while I smashed like three burgers. Yeah. Everyone else had at least one burger and a thing of chips. We all had milkshakes. I was like, I don't know how you did that, man. Plotting my veins. I just don't know how you did that. <laughs> <laughs> just going through in my head, just knifing everyone. <laughs> but surely you should have made that one of your high carb days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's very hard to control what's going into your body. Like, There's probably more carbohydrate. There's probably more calories in that meal than you would consume in a whole day. Yeah, Is probably. there? Well, if you Definitely had three, three burgers, burgers, burgers three, the yeah, milkshake exactly. and the chips, I think you won, yeah. So honestly, I used to feel so full when I would eat like that, that like I would give myself a headache. I remember like when I was playing, I would put away astronomical amounts of food like in one sitting like cheat day like was for me crazy i like i don't even know how many calories i would consume but like when i knew it was coming towards a sunday or whatever and i was going to have a bit of a cheat meal it was the day after a game it would be like two or three burgers a pizza maybe two things of chips a milkshake just crazy amount of calories so it's probably like three or four thousand calories in just that sitting alone yeah it's madness what you can put away when you're hell bent on it. Madness. <laughs> okay, so sorry. Going back to your high calorie day then, what does yeah. that consist of? So if I was on like kind of a refeed day? Mm, yes, a yeah. refeed day, yeah. So it's usually, again, it's pretty much the same, except there's one meal that I take out as almost like a free meal. So I kind of like brunchy stuff. So like pancakes, French toast, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff is usually what I use for a refeed. So I find my body kind of reacts to it best or either whatever way I kind of dose it or how it eats, how it reacts, it seems to react best. So it's kind of what I'd use pre-show, like at the end of peak week as well, to like fill up before I step on stage. So it'd usually be go out for like something like that and just order a giant ass. So it's kind of a free meal without, like obviously I don't take the piss and go order. Like Obviously you don't eat three burgers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> two don't pizzas, those, two yeah. things of chips and a milkshake. Yeah, it'd be no, one person serving of it. Yeah. Arrange but it would usually be like a large... Guys a large sack of pancakes or a large kind of French toast type meal. And that would be kind of how I'd use my refeed and just make sure that I do train on that day. Oh. And that'll be kind of just to refill, to again, refill the glycogen reserves. But it can, in theory, I suppose, be anything. It's just and did, did I break. Did you eat carbohydrates right up until your show? Yeah. The only time I didn't would be like the last... No, I would have had carbohydrates pretty much all the way too. Like I never would have cut them out entirely. Interesting. There you go. Good one to finish on then. So, got the tips all the way through, and then all the important bits were right at the end. Even so, a, a day to day <laughs> meal <laughs> plan. <laughs> so, sorry, just to conclude on this, go, looping back around to the principles, when it comes to dieting, people should focus on what? When, people, when it comes to dieting, people should focus on giving themselves time to do it. So, you want to do it slowly, you want to do it safely, you want to do it healthy. Because, like, I've seen people try to do it with like dehydrating themselves. I've seen people try to do it with like a thousand calories a day. I've seen people try to do all these ridiculous extreme diets. So if I was to say to you, I'm going on holidays this day next week and I only have a week to bring down my body composition, what advice would you give me? Ask them that question eight weeks yeah. ago. <laughs> Go buy a DeLorean, travel back in time. <laughs> Come to me in January. You could get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, so time time is a big thing when it comes to dieting. Yeah. 
I'd say and never. There's no mad uh, time is a big thing, and then not having mad swings in your calorie intake, making sure that whether it's an increase or decrease, it's progress, it's incremental. Yeah, hundred percent. And I'd say never completely eradicate something from your diet. So like a, a major food group or a micronutrient, like never completely cut out fats, never completely cut out carbohydrates, because they all have vital functions in the body apart from gaining and losing body weight right makes sense and then coming through on that i'd say the best tip again it's kind of a year-end thing but it will come in handy when you do this side of things so if you have staples in your diet like say for example most people will eat a lot of pasta a lot of rice or a lot of noodles so there'll be something that they'll build a lot of their meals around so it's usually a carbohydrate so, so it's oats pasta rice or something like that if you have a consistent measure of how much of that you're eating, like it doesn't have to be tracked or it doesn't have to be weighed out to the gram. It's if you have your favorite mug that you always weigh out your rice in mm. and you know, okay, well, I have a mug and a half of rice every day at my dinner. Then when it comes to a cutting phase, you're like, okay, well, if I can just reduce that down to one mug, it won't make a huge amount of difference to the meal you're actually eating, but you will be progressively eating less calories and be reducing your calories. And then you're essentially eating the same thing, but without knowing it, you are going into a calorie deficit. Okay. Whereas like if you're eyeballing it, it's very easy to make enough rice for 6,000 people like Smith. <laughs> like it's, <laughs> but at least if you have a consistent measure, it's very easy to do that. Whereas eyeballing <laughs> stuff is hard. <laughs> I can honestly say I've never made that mistake where I set out <laughs> to make rice for myself and ended up having enough no, rice you for 6,000 people. You've just, you've just eaten it anyway yeah, exactly. as we've established. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Rice, like I love rice. I could literally fill a fruit bowl with rice and salt and just eat it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> adore rice it's like my okay. favorite thing we may finish on that great piece of information <laughs> for everybody to know <laughs> all you call me is rice and rice and salt just put it on i'm there. just trying to get across to you how much i actually love rice now i could see you've got real passion in your voice for oh, rice here. yeah definitely love it okay good okay finish there